Howdy again everybody, and today I'm looking at one of Canon's most professional macro lenses, the EF 100mm f2.8 IS USM L. It comes in at about £650, so it's not Canon's cheapest macro lens. 100mm macro lenses with a fast maximum aperture, as bright as f2.8, have been popular for a very long time. Firstly, macro photography is quite a lot of fun, giving you the opportunity to get up really close to very small subjects. And secondly, the slightly longer focal length of 100mm combined with the fast maximum aperture of f2.8 means that you can get some very nicely out of focus backgrounds in your photography, making it quite useful for portrait pictures, and its compressed backgrounds can sometimes give nice landscape shots too. This particular lens is quite modern and it boasts very high build quality in line with other Canon L lenses and also image stabilization. The image stabilization on this lens is quite sophisticated. It's known as hybrid image stabilization and it's meant to help with longitudinal shaking as well as lateral which could be useful when you're doing macro photography as you're so close to your subject. Here's some footage with the stabilization turned off and here it is turned on. As you can see, in normal use, the stabilization is very effective indeed, even making this lens quite useful for video work. However, when you're shooting close-up pictures, the stabilization is less effective. Here's some close-up footage without stabilization, and here it's turned on. So with close-up photography, it's only giving a little extra help, but still, that's better than nothing. Well, let's take a look at the lens's build quality. It's quite a stylish piece of kit that feels very solid to use. Some people might be disappointed that there's a lot of plastic in its construction, but it's very high quality plastic, and at least that helps to keep the lens's weight down. The most noticeable feature is a large focus ring, which is very precise to use, and very well damped, which is essential for manual focusing when you're shooting up close. As usual for a lens of this class, it has full-time manual focusing, so you can turn that focus ring at any time. The USM autofocus motor is averagely fast, but very quiet. The lens also boasts weather sealing, to help it keep out dust and moisture. So it's a wonderfully well-built and tough lens that could probably survive in all kinds of difficult environments, perhaps even boiling water, Do not try this at home. Moving on quickly, let's look at image quality. We'll start by seeing how it performs on a full frame camera, in this case a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. I've turned on peripheral illumination and chromatic aberration correction for this test. In the middle of the image we see very good sharpness with good contrast levels. The further good news is that the sharpness continues into the corners of the image. Stop the lens's aperture down to f4 for absolutely stunning resolution across the image frame. It stays that sharp until about f16, at which point softness starts to creep in due to the effects of diffraction. f22 and f32 become noticeably soft, which is normal for a lens of this type. Overall, the lens is bitingly sharp at all but the narrowest of apertures, turning in a fantastic resolution from corner to corner. Ok, well let's test it on a slightly harder playing field of an APS-C camera, the 20 megapixel Canon 70D. At f2.8, in the middle of the image, the lens is quite sharp, although not quite as good as the resolution on a full frame. The corners of the image are also just good. Stop the aperture down to f4 for fantastic sharpness from the corners of the image right back into the middle, and the lens remains super sharp down to about f11. It starts to get softer again from about f16, and if you stop down to f32, then the image is crazy soft. But again, that's just a fraction. It's normal for any lens on an APS-C camera. Avoid those very narrow apertures, and again, the Canon 100mm f2.8 L lens gives a very nice performance indeed. Ok, let's look at distortion and vignetting. Even on a full frame camera, like the Canon 6D, we see basically no distortion at all. There is some noticeable vignetting at f2.8, 
but stop the aperture down to f4 or use peripheral illumination on your camera and those corners will brighten up for you. Overall, it's a nice performance for distortion and vignetting. Close-up picture quality is, of course, very important for a macro lens. Here at f2.8, you really can see the extremely narrow depth of field. The area in focus is nice and sharp, although you can see some longitudinal chromatic aberration. The out-of-focus highlights are a bit pink in the foreground and green in the background. The lens gets extremely sharp from about f4 and stays that way down to f11. f16 is a touch softer and so is f22, with f32 being outright poor, virtually unusable. But as you can see, as we zoom out, that narrow aperture does at least give you a huge depth of field, covering almost the entire subject. Keys look so dirty, don't they, close up? Let's see how the lens performs when working against bright light. Not particularly well, it seems. That probably wasn't a design priority for Canon, seeing as this is a macro lens we're talking about, and not a wide-angle one. Something I really like about this lens is the quality of its bokeh. It can give you some quite strongly out-of-focus backgrounds, and in all situations and at all apertures, the quality of that bokeh is very smooth indeed. That really contributes to making your images look great. Overall, the Canon 100mm f2.8 IS USM L macro lens is very lovable indeed, one that's become quite popular with professionals. It's more important to own a macro lens when you're shooting with a full frame camera. Their larger sensors mean that it's harder to get a close magnification with most lenses. And they're just so useful and fun to use, you never know what small sized thing you'll want to take a picture of next. I mean, here's a picture of the engagement ring I gave to my fiancé last month. She said yes, by the way. For those who are interested, here's how the L lens compares to its older and much cheaper cousin, Canon's non-L 100mm macro lens. The L lens has a focus ring that's a bit smoother to use, which is useful. It has better build quality, including weather sealing. Obviously, it has image stabilization, not present in the older lens. Also, the L lens, in my opinion, has much nicer quality bokeh. In the older lens's favour, it is just as sharp as the L lens, and it's only about half the price. It remains a great lens, obviously, but I'd say that the more expensive L lens is probably just about worth the extra money, if only for the image stabilisation and nicer quality bokeh. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a practical lens that's also lots of fun and also quite useful for video work, then the Canon 100mm f2.8 macro L lens is simply a classic. Have fun with it, it comes highly recommended.